Hey, buddy. Yeah? How do you keep that truck looking so good? I use brake cleaner. What do you use? Hey, guys. Good morning. First thing I want to say is thank you to all you new subscribers who've joined onto the channel. I have a lot of great content that's coming. I hope you get something out of, uh, out of some of these videos. What I'm tackling today is the climate control system on my 94 Ford F350 7.3 IDI diesel. Uh, the 7.3 here has had a rough life. It's had a lot of uh, maintenance over the course of its life and a lot of things have been disconnected under the hood. Principally, the thing that I'm addressing today, um, in addition to replacing the hood, which is the reason I'm working on the climate control system, I'll explain in a second. The climate controls in these OBS Fords are all plastic hard lines uh, for the vacuum connections. And as you guys know, if you've worked on these and if you've ever touched any of those lines after 20 or 30 years, they're very brittle. In most cases, they snap, uh, snap quite easily, snap right off at the vacuum fitting, and leave you with something that looks like this. And it leaves you with, number one, a vacuum leak, which on a gasser is a big problem. On a diesel, you don't really notice a vacuum leak because of the separate vacuum pump. In the case of a gasser, the vacuum reservoir holds vacuum for things like the EGR valve and the climate controls in the dash. For a diesel, like mine, 7.3 IDI, uh, the reservoir is only used for the climate controls. That's the only thing that needs to hold vacuum. The cruise control, at least on my model of truck, mine's a 94, maybe on the older ones the cruise control was vacuum operated, but the cruise on my truck is all electronic, so it doesn't use any vacuum source. But it leaves you with a climate control system that's stuck on defrost. When these things lose vacuum to the climate control switch, uh, the air valves in the dash flip all the way up to defrost and that's where it stays and you don't get any selectability between the vents. And that's what's going on with my 7.3 IDI here since there's no vacuum connected at all to the climate control switch it's stuck on defrost. Um, which wouldn't really be a big problem if you don't drive the truck very much in the rain. But last night uh, we took the took the mighty Ford here to go pick up a new hood for it. The hood on my truck is sprung and it's been stepped on and it's been pried up to I guess get to the batteries and it's bent and bowed and it's horrible so uh, I have picked up a new white hood that uh, will be the fourth different color white on my truck and uh, will give me at least a little bit better looking front end out here on the truck so I'm gonna get around to swapping that here maybe tonight or tomorrow but for today what I'm gonna do is flush out the uh, the heater core and the engine block and radiator. I've got some Prestone radiator flush in the system. It's been in there for a few weeks trying to clean out all of the uh, neglect that's been going on with this uh, radiator. And I haven't had any leaks so I'm guessing it's doing its job but it's time to get it out of there. So I'm going to flush out everything, drain the radiator, put some fresh antifreeze in there and um, I'm also going to flash flush out the heater core directly while I have the, the lines disconnected. So my truck, much like your truck, has broken plastic lines uh, on all of these vacuum controls and I'm going to show you guys how you can fix that, patch it up and make it work. You can of course order a whole new plastic line kit from Ford and get all of the proper lines, the proper bends and they'll last you for another 20 years or so until they get brittle and crack from all the engine compartment heat that builds up and, and embrittles these plastic lines. Or you can do like I'm going to do and replace all of that stuff with just regular rubber vacuum line. And that's what I'm going to show you here today is how to, uh, how to patch these things together. This isn't a proper fix. It's not a replacement, but it's, it's how you can patch it, patch it all together, make it work, and make it last for a while. And hopefully it'll last as long as you need it to last. In my case, in my truck, I've got a vacuum T that connects to the vacuum pump that's belt driven off of the front of the 7.3. Vacuum is pumped into this plastic T and there's a variety of nipples that go to whatever accessories need vacuum. In my case, there's only two connected vacuum ports um, on that T. One is going to the brake booster and providing vacuum to the brake booster. The other one 
is the broken plastic plug here that would go to my AC controls and vacuum reservoir. Now if you have a gasser you'll have you won't have a vacuum pump and you won't have a vacuum T. Um, well you'll have a vacuum T but it's it's the source on the intake manifold. It pulls vacuum from the intake manifold and then goes to your holding reservoir and back to your EGR valve and to your brake booster and your accessories. So it's a little bit different in source where the vacuum is coming from but otherwise it's the same setup. On my truck I'm going to use this vacuum reservoir that I have kicking around here. It's actually not for the 7.3 IDI. This vacuum reservoir I believe is off of my old 94 gasser that I had and uh, I swapped out the vacuum reservoir on the gasser for one of those small little round ones because that's all I needed was to supply vacuum to the climate controls and on my truck I really don't need this big giant double stage reservoir but since I have it that's what I'm going to use and these things are actually two separate reservoirs that are just bonded together so there's a, a nice big large one here at the bottom that would be for your main vacuum driven accessories that you want to store vacuum pressure for and the upper one uh, is, is a little bit smaller chamber so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this up I've got plenty of room on the passenger side fender well uh, inside the engine compartment I'm going to drill my three holes here and mount this in there so I can then use the bottom part of the reservoir to provide vacuum for my climate controls the way these work is they have a plug on them a two port plug that uh, connects here onto the two nipples on the reservoir. If you have a double stage reservoir you have two of these plugs. And the way it works is vacuum comes in on the red port which is actually labeled. If you remove this plug from the rack vacuum reservoir you can see that the port on the input side is labeled vac. That means that's your vacuum source. So in my case this is going to run to the vacuum T on the driver side of the engine compartment where my vacuum pump provides vacuum and I'll, that will then provide a source for the storage bottle or the reservoir for vacuum. The other port is a check valve port. It actually has a one-way valve in there so you can pull vacuum out but you can't push and these vacuum reservoirs have a check valve built into them so you can only pull vacuum off one side. If you connect it backwards and you have your accessories trying to pull vacuum on the input port you won't get any vacuum out of it. So the red source is our or the red line is our source that's going to come from our vacuum source and the output line is the black line that then goes to your climate control switch. From the climate control switch you'll have a couple different vacuum lines coming off to different vacuum actuated motors that are inside the dash that control the flaps and the vents. So in my case on the 7.3 I've only got two vacuum lines going into the into the passenger cabin that I have to worry about, a black one and a white one. The black one is the source into the climate control switch that will be coming from my reservoir and the white one is the actuator motor signal wire or signal vacuum line that connects to the actuator motor on the heater box inside the engine compartment. Now you could just use rubber line and do away with all of the hard plastic lines and connect this to all of your nipples directly um, like I'm doing here. The line that I've got is 532nd and it works very good for just putting it on to the nipples in place of the rubber connectors and that's what I'm going to do for the connections to the climate control. What I'm going to do is replace it with a regular piece of plastic hard line that I've got that isn't brittle, just a little spare piece. And I'm going to snip this off and leave myself about an inch or so leave myself a little bit that I can connect my rubber line up to sorry about that and then I will slip my rubber line over here zip tie all this together with some glue in between just so I don't have any leaks because this rubber tubing I bought is a little oversized so that gives me a nice sealed connector now that I can put my rubber vacuum line over and um, route it through the engine compartment. I found out what happened to my vacuum reservoir for the 
7.3 IDI here. It was right there the whole time. The uh, previous owner had snapped it off of the heater box and stuck it in there backwards. So it wasn't missing at all. It was just uh, wrongly installed. So I've got to repair uh, the damage here that was done. The uh, Fortunately, it fits back into the heater box pretty well, so I'm just going to clean it up really well and use some JB Weld to hold it in there and cover that with some duct tape until the JB Weld sets. I think that'll be fine for the heater box. If it really bothers me down the road, I can either fiberglass the hole closed or um, get myself a new heater box. If plumber's tape is part of your repair strategy, you need to reconsider your strategy. Alright guys, so now that we got the uh, vacuum reservoir hooked up into the system, we're dumping all of our source vacuum from the vacuum pump into the reservoir, from the reservoir then to the climate controls. Now we've just got to start it up, test it, see if it's got vacuum, and see how long the reservoir maintains that vacuum after we shut the truck off. She's definitely a little cold-blooded this morning. So now the big question, if we shut it off, and it has no vacuum from the vacuum pump, how long is it going to maintain vacuum in the reservoir? So I don't know if I'd really call this an upgrade, putting a bigger vacuum reservoir in there. I don't think there's any real need for it unless you have vacuum intensive uh, devices that need a reservoir. Uh, but I had the reservoir sitting around, it wasn't being used, so I might as well do something with it. So it was easy enough to put it in there and it's working great. I've got plenty of vacuum still. Truck hasn't been running for five minutes. And I've operated all the vents in that period of time many times, so still has vacuum. So I guess we'll call this one good. Alright guys, well the vacuum reservoir was a huge success. I've got so much vacuum in there I don't know what to do with it. And I only used half of the reservoir. I still have a whole other half of that reservoir I could use for uh, some other separate vacuum system if I needed a, I don't know, a vacuum operated valve of some kind or... Uh, but we're going to call this one good and uh, successful on the vacuum reservoir. I've got plenty of vacuum. So now time to swap out the front hood. I have a, a new hood that's going on here that isn't bowed and bent and uh, completely deformed like my current hood is. So I'm going to loosen those bolts up, get that old hood off of there, and get some help to put the new hood on. Alright guys, well the hood's on there, it's lined up as good as I can get it for now. Um, I've got to do some alignment with the fenders and I need to replace that cowl next. So I'm looking for a service truck white cowl if anybody's got one out there. You can see here the obvious cowl damage. And we're pretty tight against that cowl. I don't think it's fully seated uh, up underneath the trim here. But the, uh, and the gap's a little wide here. I think, uh, I think I might need to rework that a little bit, but for now, she's all right. Well, guys, that's about it for me today. Um, I got the uh, all the vacuum lines sorted out, and the AC uh, and heat controls are working normally. All the climate controls and the vent, vent ranges are working properly, so shows you can do a lot with a few zip ties and some rubber glue, right? But I'm real happy with how that came out. Having the vacuum uh, bottle in there, the vacuum reservoir is nice. You know, I don't think I'm going to need it much on this truck, but it's nice to have that extra capacity, uh, you know, for those times when the vacuum pump isn't putting out 100%. Um, my, all my vents should work at full capacity, uh, full speed, without any trouble. So you can see I went ahead and beat this new hood on, into place, and... Uh, it came out okay. I've, I've got some gap problems, but this whole truck has some gap problems. It's, it's lived a rough life, and um, I need to order up some fender shims. I think I'm going to replace at least one of the front fenders. 
I need to replace the driver's side front door. Um, I've just got to find one that's service truck white, which apparently hasn't been a problem so far. But yeah, she ain't no beauty queen, you know, uh, but I think she looks uh, looks pretty good now that it's all one color. And uh, the new hood on there, the, uh, the flaky clear coat, you know, has a nice glisten to it in the sunlight. So, <laughs> so I think it's a lot better hood than what I had on there before. The old one was stepped on and kind of sprung. But yeah, it's definitely a step in the right direction. So anyway, guys, that wraps it up for me for today. Thank you for watching. If you're new, please click subscribe. We've got a lot of great Ford OBS content coming up soon. And if you think I did a good job on the video or you just like white service trucks, give me a like.